Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game, back with Oxygen Not Included, and I just wanted to do a kind of quick tutorial uh, or guide on gases. Now, I know there's some guides already out there, but I just wanted to do an up-to-date current one and just kind of share my knowledge about what I've learned. And this is for beginners. Uh, if you're a seasoned player, uh, this, prob this guide's probably not for you. Uh, so first, I'll just kind of briefly discuss the six main gases you'll encounter in the game. Uh, so oxygen is the basic one here in the top left cube. And then we've got polluted oxygen. Here we got carbon dioxide, the black one, hydrogen, natural gas, and then chlorine. Now your duplicants can breathe in oxygen. They can also breathe in polluted oxygen and they will exhale uh, small amounts of carbon dioxide, this black stuff. And then these other gases are used for, hydrogen is usually used for cooling and I'll explain why later in the video. Uh, natural gas is used as a fuel to produce power. And chlorine is good for killing germs, but it's uh, that's about its kind of only use. Now, there's a gas overlay that you can use in the top right here. You can also hit F1. And it'll show you what's breathable and what's not breathable. So oxygen is breathable, polluted oxygen is, is breathable, and then these other four are not breathable. Over here, I have another box, which uh, basically I took a box like this and I destroyed all the walls and I kind of let the gases settle down and what you can see here is that hydrogen floats to the top left and then the next lightest gas is polluted oxygen which is kind of like right here and then pure oxygen and then natural gas and then chlorine and then in the bottom right is carbon dioxide now you'll notice over here the carbon dioxide I started with uh, 2000 grams per tile you can see that in the overlay and what's happened over here is that it's been compressed down by all these other gases so you'll, you've got 13 kilograms of carbon dioxide in the bottom right. So that's just a quick overview of like where the gases will flow kind of naturally. So you can see our bands of oxygen here and polluted oxygen. Now I've got a mini tiny base here with one little duplicate set up. And what I wanted to show you is the CO2 that they're breathing out. You can see little pockets of it here. I've made a little trough or a little kind of place for the CO2 to go. And because CO2 goes to the bottom right, all this... Um, all the CO2 will kind of collect down here. There's also a few other gases in there, but it's mainly CO2. So an early game way to kind of not get rid of CO2, but to uh, manage it is just to make a little CO2 pit in the bottom right of your base, and it'll just kind of collect. Now, eventually, it'll work its way up and fill up, and you'll get CO2 in the base. But if you keep kind of a high-pressure oxygen area in your base, it'll keep it at bay for quite a while. Now one early game way to get rid of the CO2 is to build, under the oxygen tab here in the bottom left, is to build an algae terrarium. And if I built one right here, it requires algae and it uses quite a bit of water. It will eventually kind of consume the CO2 and give out little bits of oxygen. Now to produce oxygen, I don't recommend using these because they use a ton of water. I recommend using, under the oxygen menu item here, top, uh, bottom left, using the algae deoxidizer. Now usually uh, the best place to build these is kind of at the top of your base. Now I only have a one level base, but let's say I had kind of three levels, I would build it at the top. And the reason is, is that uh, oxygen kind of collects at the top and I would also build the bedrooms at the top and then the CO2 can kind of float its way down into your CO2 pit. These are a good way in early game to generate oxygen. Now you probably also want to have um, kind of a sealed base now, if you want to go exploring, you can kind of, uh, I'll just draw a little ramp here. You can build an airlock after you do the research. Now, I usually use mechanized airlocks because they're quicker. And when I say quicker, I mean the doors open and close uh, faster. And they can be powered, but you don't need to power them. So let's just put one here. And maybe a little ramp so they can get out. So that way, all the oxygen that you've gener generated in your base uh, kind of is maintained. And when they go out exploring in other areas, uh, this airlock kind of keeps things um, somewhat contained. Now, when they do open the door, a little bit of gas, if, let, if there's an area of low pressure here and high pressure here, a little bit of gas will kind of work its way out. Now, if I open this, you can kind of see this. You can see it flow out. Now, some people build... Um, multiple airlocks like this 
oops, kind of like this, uh, which will limit the amount of gas that gets out because they'll go in here and then the gas will get trapped in it. A little bit will bleed out each time. And there's an even more complicated version where you can go like this. And this kind of destroys the gas that's inside. So they'll go in, if any leaks out, it'll get destroyed in here and then they'll walk through. Um, I consider this kind of setup an exploit and they'll probably fix this in the future. You can also build a series of doors to just destroy water or destroy gases, but that's, uh, that's kind of cheating. Now, later in the game, um, you'll get a thing called an electrolyzer. And we'll build one right here. Now this thing takes in uh, fresh water and it produces hydrogen and oxygen. So it's a good way to generate oxygen mid-game. Now some people build these right in their bases, um, which works fine. As long as you have uh, good airflow, the hydrogen will kind of collect in the top left of your base and the oxygen will just kind of uh, pressurize in the base. Now one thing you'll want to make sure you have is airflow tiles between the floors. So I'll build some here. You research these. These are early an early uh, research item. Let's see here where you get them. So they're under pressure management here in the second column of research, airflow tiles. So a really useful item. That way, if you had your bedrooms on this top floor, uh, the CO2 that they breathe out at night would fall through the airflow tile and make its way eventually down into this bottom right. And also, um, if I had airflow in this middle area like this, the hydrogen that this thing is making would kind of work its way up and come here. So let's actually build, let's set this up. So I've got a little um, area of water here and I already have some piping uh, built. So I'll just continue that pipe. I usually use abyss light for my pipes. Let's go like this. Now I'm in, I'm in debug mode so I can build things for free. The duplicates don't have to build it. And let's give that some power. So I've kind of rearranged things here and made this a vacuum so you can see this thing working. So it's using a thousand grams a second of water. It's emitting oxygen, 88, 888 grams per second and 112 grams per second of hydrogen. So if you use the gas overlay, you can see the oxygen building up and it's also giving off hydrogen, which is ending up in the top right here or top left, sorry. Now, eventually you'll want to deal with this hydrogen. And one of the easy ways to do that is to build a gas pump. Now, a gas pump is used for moving gases around your base. Uh, you can build them out of copper, but I'm going to build them out of gold amalgam, which allows them to uh, reach a higher heat before they melt down. So I'll put one there. Now we're going to have a bit of hydrogen and probably some oxygen up here because the gases kind of mix. Even though most of the stuff up here will be hydrogen, we can use a gas filter under ventilation, gas filter. We'll stick one there. And then we gotta connect it all up. So I'll use a gas pipe. I'll use Abyssalite. Now I use Abyssalite for almost all my piping because it it's a perfect insulator. So if the gases are hot, they, they, they won't leak heat anywhere. So we'll connect the output of that pump into the input of the filter. And then this middle orange one is the filtered output. So we'll send that up there. And then this other one is everything else. So we'll stick that just there. Now this one needs a gas vent, which we'll put here. And we gotta choose what we want as our output. So we'll choose hydrogen. And we gotta power all this up, so I'll put in some power lines. Now if we use the gas overlay, F7, or ventilation overlay as it's called. So hydrogen will be coming out of this middle tube. And we can send it to a hydrogen generator, which generates power and it uh, takes in hydrogen as its fuel. So we'll use a gas pipe oh, that's already sent going in there. And then we need to kind of send the power from this thing somewhere. So we'll build a couple batteries under power, batteries, and we'll add wired up. 
So it's taking the hydrogen, filtering it out, sending it to the hydrogen generator, and powering up our batteries. And then we can use this for, you know, whatever we want to run, any kind of power that we need. Now, as I said, you can build this kind of in your base, or you can have a dedicated area where you, where you build this kind of setup with one or more electrolyzers, pumps, and filters. The advantage of doing it somewhere else is control the settings a bit more. Now, I'll usually build this in a cold ice or ice biome so everything stays nice and cool. Now, you probably want to build two gas pumps for every one electrolyzer that you have. Uh, that's usually a good ratio. Otherwise, uh, what happens is this uh, electrolyzer will meet, reach max gas pressure. Now, some people build their pumps like right above. You can do that as well. Oops, let's go under ventilation. They'll do something like this. So it's sucking up the air directly from the electrolyzer and then dealing with it. So that's kind of the early way to make oxygen with the deoxidizer, the algae deoxidizer. And there's a lot of algae on the map, starting map, so you can use algae for quite a while before you'll run out. And you can also get uh, algae from slime, and there's lots of slime in the game, but you have to be careful because it's full of germs. And then the mid-game way is kind of using electrolyzers. There's another way to generate pure oxygen, and that's from polluted oxygen. There's a few ways to do that. You can use a deodorizer. So if you've got a room full of uh, polluted oxygen and you put one of these in, it'll use some sand and it'll slowly filter the polluted oxygen into pure oxygen. Another more advanced way to use polluted oxygen is to cool it down. And if you cool it down enough, it will turn into a liquid. And when polluted oxygen turns into a liquid and then it's rewarmed up, it'll be pure oxygen. So it's a way of cleaning polluted oxygen. If we click on a tile of oxygen in this room and then go into the details tab over here, we can see that it's condensation point. It turns into a liquid at negative 183 degrees. So if you're able to cool down ox uh, polluted oxygen, actually I should have looked at polluted oxygen. Let's go, let's go to our polluted oxygen. It has a, oh, it's the same. So it, it turns into polluted oxygen, look, turns into a liquid at negative 183 Celsius. And then when you warm that liquid oxygen back up, it'll be pure oxygen. It's a pretty advanced way to make pure oxygen though. Now another way to purify um, polluted oxygen is using these little guys that you'll find on the map called puffs. What they'll do is they'll suck up the polluted oxygen, output clean oxygen, and also poop out slime. Oh, this one's doing it here. Oh, because I got a morb in there. So this little morb down here, he gives off polluted oxygen, and then the puff is sucking it up, cleaning it, and pooping out slime. Now slime itself also gives off polluted oxygen, so it's kind of like a symbiosis going on, going on here. There's other ways to generate polluted oxygen. Um, a little bit of polluted oxygen will kind of gas out of polluted water, naturally. So on the map, you'll find these pockets of polluted water that are trapped in rock. And the longer the game runs, the more kind of pressurized polluted oxygen that will build up in there. And one way to get it out is to like put an airlock in and put a deodorizer in and get a bunch of free clean oxygen. Now your dupes can breathe polluted oxygen, but the issue with polluted oxygen is that if you have slime lung, which is a type of germ, you can see it under the germ overlay here, F9. So we've got slime lung. If we click on this tile, we can see we've got around 2,000 slime lung germs. And slime lung will multiply if it's uh, in kind of warm polluted oxygen. So left, left, to, left alone for a while, it'll just multiply and multiply. And slime lung makes your duplicate sick, and you don't want that. Now, if you build an outhouse, which is one of the first things you'll probably build when you start a new game, you put dirt in it, and when it gets used, it comes out as um, polluted dirt. And that polluted dirt will give off uh, polluted oxygen, which you can use. You can filter with a deodorizer and actually use. Rotting food will also generate polluted oxygen. That's probably enough detail about oxygen and polluted oxygen. Let's talk about uh, CO2 now. So the main way you get CO2 uh, early on is from duplicates breathing, but kind of mid-game you'll get uh, access to the coal generator, this thing. So you burn coal in this and it outputs 
uh, carbon dioxide, heat, and energy. And also later on the natural gas generator, which is this thing here. It takes in natural gas and it uh, gives off polluted water and outputs CO2. So these two both make CO2. And much later on in the game, you'll get a polymer press. This thing will output hot CO2 as well. Now my favorite way to get rid of CO2 is to pump it down. If At the very bottom of the map, you'll find these guys called slicksters, which are these little creatures which uh, they consume carbon dioxide and they output oil, crude oil, which is super useful. So I usually set up a little room full of slicksters and pump CO2 to that room. It has to be fairly warm, uh, over 35 degrees, I think, Celsius. And those slicksters will eat up your CO2 and produce oil, which is a really valuable resource. Now there's uh, one other way to get rid of CO2, which you can use, and that's under oxygen carbon skimmer, which is this device. Now this device, you pump in clean water and it outputs polluted water but it will uh, suck up all the CO2 in the area in the process. If you want to get rid of CO2 quickly, this is probably the device you want to use. But since CO2 is actually a resource, if you send it to Slicksters, I prefer that method. Now, one other way to get rid of, not rid of CO2, but temporarily getting rid of it, is to pump it into a room with a high pressure vent. Now, a regular vent, I think, has an overpressurization of, yeah, 2,000 grams or 2 kilograms. But a high pressure vent will go all the way to 20 kilograms. So we could, um, let's say we had a bunch of CO2 up top here, we could use a gas pump and pump it into this room and, until every tile got to about 20 uh, kilograms, and then that would stop. But if you use a big enough area, you can store a lot of CO2 using one of these high pressure vents. But these require plastic to build, so they're kind of a late game uh, tool. Until you get that, though, you can use the regular gas vent and fill uh, each tile up to two, two kilograms. A more advanced technique for getting rid of CO2 is to freeze it. You can, uh, you can turn it into a liquid by cooling it down to negative 48 degrees, but that's kind of a more advanced technique. You can also turn it into a solid at an even colder temperature. Now let's talk about um, natural gas. Now the source of this is usually a natural gas geyser. There are other sources like the fertilizer synthesizer, which is under refinement. So here we go. This thing you feed it polluted water and it will output natural gas. Three of these will output enough natural gas to power one natural gas generator. So it's good to build them in a ratio of three to one, but you don't, you don't need to build these um, right away, you can just use a natural gas geyser. Let's see if I have one on this map. Yeah, here's one. So one of these will support uh, around two or three natural gas generators. Once you find one of these, kind of the best way to deal with them is to put a, like a granite wall around them. And then put in a gas pump. Made out of gold amalgam, because it can get warm in there. Usually I'll build an airlock while I'm kind of constructing this. So I'll build my gas pump, I'll lead some pipes out, I'll hook up the power, and then I'll, I'll usually lock the door. So if I had a door here, then I'd go lock it so no dupes go in there. Now that way this pump, whenever, it'll just continually pump out the uh, natural gas and then you can send it off to your natural gas generator. One other source of natural gas is through dupes farting. If you get a flatulent dupe, they'll fart out a little bit of this natural gas. I generally don't pick uh, flatulent dupes just because dealing with natural gas in the base is a pain in the butt. No pun intended there. There's other sources of natural gas like the oil refinery. Now this thing you send in uh, crude oil and it uh, outputs natural gas. And it doesn't have a gas output like this natural gas generator. So it just kind of puts the gas into the room. So you want to you want to build this in a sealed room, maybe with an airlock, not that small. You want a bit more room in there, but something like that. Then you send in oil. Its output will also be, um, let's just look at the plumbing here. 
So you would send in oil this way, and then the, the product is petroleum, so you'd send that out and you'd store it or use it. And natural gas will build up in this room, so you'll probably want to put a pump in here as well, filter out the natural gas, and send it off to your natural gas generator. So that's, um, that's natural gas. Let's take a look at chlorine. Now chlorine is used by one device in the game. It is the, under utilities, there is a ore scrubber. Now I've used this once and then I never used it again. It's kind of, I would say kind of useless. Now it has an input, a gas input, which you put chlorine gas into. And the duplicants will put any ore that they have on them into this thing when they walk by it and it'll kind of purify it, and you can set a direction, kind of like a sink. So if they walk from the left to the right, they'll put the dirty ore in here, it'll clean it with chlorine gas, and then it'll come out. A much easier way to use chlorine to kill germs, in my opinion, is to build a little room. Let's say this was our, our room. Now you'll find natural pockets of chlorine in the game, and you can use those. Just put a little airlock on them. Or you can build a room and pump chlorine into it. What I do then is I put storage containers in there. Slime is often covered in slime lung, which is a disease. So I'll often get the dupes to put the slime in these containers. And then you'll notice that the germs die almost immediately when they're in the presence of chlorine. Now your map will likely have a chlorine geyser that looks like this. That will output chlorine gas and then you can use that, pump it into your kind of chlorine storage room. But generally you want to avoid chlorine. If it gets in your base, it's kind of a pain to get out. You have to set up a gas pump with a filter or many filters. So you set up a filter and then you choose chlorine and then you'll have to send that chlorine to a closed room somewhere that you don't ever go to or send it to your chlorine storage room. The other source of chlorine is uh, bleach stone, which you'll find often around chlorine. And it's like a little mineral that if you dig it out, it will, it'll give off little puffs of chlorine gas. There is one gas that I didn't mention, which is actually steam. If water reaches um, 99.4 degrees, it will turn into steam. And here's some here. It's in a hot area here, so that some of this water here is turning into steam. It will burn your duplicates unless they're wearing an exosuit. So good to avoid, good to avoid the steam. Now there's uh, one other um, topic about gases that's kind of interesting. And if you click on one of them, let's click on oxygen here. And you go to the details tab, you'll see this thing, specific heat capacity. And it's 1.005 joules per gram per Kelvin. Now what this number means, it's essentially the amount of heat that's required to increase the temperature of a gas, uh, one degree Kelvin. So it's, it's the gas's capacity to kind of swallow heat. Oxygen has a specific heat capacity to be around one. And hydrogen has a specific heat capacity of 2.4. So it's quite good at absorbing heat. Now some devices you'll build, advanced devices, uh, you might want to use hydrogen to cool things or to heat things. Uh, and because it has a good capacity to absorb and absorb heat, it's ideal. Natural gas is not too bad. It's similar. It has a specific heat capacity of 2.19. And carbon dioxide has a much lower one. It has um, 0.8. And then I think chlorine has the lowest. It's uh, 0.48. Now, what does this all mean? Uh, I've set up a little experiment here I can show you. So I've got three areas here that have vacuums. So I'll put some oxygen in one and I put two kilograms per tile at 37 degrees. And then we'll put hydrogen in one. Actually, let's put carbon dioxide in one. And then finally hydrogen. So it's the same two, two kilograms per tile, same temperature for all three. And I'm gonna put in three space heaters. And I'm gonna power them all up. Now if we start the game We'll notice the space heaters at, this one's at 25, 24, 30. Well, th th that's just because this one started later. But if we take a look at the gases as they heat up. Now look at this 
carbon dioxide space heater. It's at 49 degrees already. And you'll notice the space heater over here in hydrogen is only at 42. And if we let it run a bit more, this one's at 58, this one's at 44. Now what's going on is that the hydrogen is much better at absorbing the heat from this thing than the carbon dioxide because it has a higher specific heat capacity. So here we are about 30 seconds later, the carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide space heater is at 73 degrees and it's heating up this carbon dioxide really quickly and the hydrogen one's only at 49 because this hydrogen is absorbing the heat. Oxygen sits somewhere between the middle of these two and if we had some chlorine it would be even worse than carbon dioxide. Now the higher the pressure of the gas the more ability for heat to be kind of dumped into it. Now there's also the thermal conductivity but I won't really go into that um, I'll probably do that in a different video, but very briefly, if it has a low thermal conductivity, it acts as an insulator, and if the thermal conductivity is high, it acts as a conductor. So if you wanted to move some water in a, in a liquid pipe, for instance, and you made it out of abyssalite, if we look at the details, the thermal conductivity is basically zero. So any heat of the liquid that's traveling through this pipe will stay in the pipe. It won't leak out into the atmosphere. Same goes for gas pipes made out of abyssalite. Now you'll notice there's these insulated pipes. As far as I know, they have actually no effect. They cost more resources. They cost 400 kilograms of resources. But the regular ones only use 25. Now the only advantage to using these is they're visually different, so you can kind of tell. But generally, you'll be building all your pipes out of abyssalite if you want to keep the heat in them. If you want the heat to leak out, then you would use something like um, granite or wolframite, which is a special metal you'll find in ice biomes. If we look at the granite pipe, it has a thermal conductivity of 3.3 and wolframite has a thermal conductivity of 15. It's really good at dumping its heat from the liquid into the atmosphere as it's going through the pipe. You'll often see people build kind of radiator systems out of wolframite pipe like this. They'll, uh, they'll pump a cool liquid through it and that'll cool down the room that the that pipe's in. Or if you wanted to heat up a room, you could pump a hot liquid through it and it will heat up the air. But that's kind of a, a different topic. Now we've gone over the gas pump and the gas filter. There's a few more gas gadgets we talked about the two vents, the high pressure one and the regular one. Um, there's a gas valve, which lets you control the flow of gas through a pipe. Uh, pretty useful. So it has an input and an output. And then you can set this dial or type in the number that you want. Just lets you control the gas flowing through it. Um, there's a gas bridge. Pretty useful if you have a length of pipe. Let's say you had a pipe coming in here and there was a this pipe was in the way. Let's do it here actually. And you didn't want to fuse them, you can use gas bridge. And there's an input and an output. So the gas would come along, jump over this pipe, and then continue on. There's also a mini gas pump that you'll encounter late later game and it requires plastic. It's just like the pump, but it uh, it can only transfer 50 grams of gas per or grams per second, whereas the regular gas pump uh, can do 500 grams per second. It's kind of a less efficient pump for the amount of energy that you use. The mini gas pump uses 60 watts, and the regular gas pump uses 240 watts. So if you have to move a small amount of gas, this is worthwhile but generally you'll be using this full-size gas pump. And kind of the last piece of equipment that's pretty new to the game is this gas shutoff. Now let's say you were filling up a room. Oh, we'll come from this end. So it's got an input and an output. Let's say you were filling up a room with gas and you wanted it to shut off when it hit a certain pressure. Under the automation tab, there is an Atmos sensor. So you would put one of these in the room and when that sensor hit a certain, let's say, 
we wanted it, the current pressure is 258 grams. So let's say if it got to 500 grams or 555 grams, we could build an automation wire back to our shutoff valve. And it would automatically activate if the pressure went above 555 grams. It's a good way to control flow of gases. Now you can use this Atmo switch in combination with a pump as well. And a common use for that would be, let's go back down to our, let's say we had something like this. We could put in an Atmo switch, Atmo sensor in this room. And the pressure right now is 6.8 kilograms. So let's say we didn't want to run our pump all the time. We could say activate if the pressure is above 200 grams. And we would hook that automation wire up to this pump. That way if the pressure fell too much, it would just shut off and save power. Otherwise this pump will run until there's a vacuum in here, which is kind of a waste of uh, power. So that was a lot of material to cover. Um, hopefully it was useful. Let me know in a comment if, uh, if I missed anything. I'm sure I missed lots of things, but uh, I just wanted to cover the basics and some of the more advanced techniques. As always, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.